and welcome to the Cult Cinema Circle podcast. My name is Jesse, and I'll be your host. So today we're going to be going over what I watched in the month of November of 2023. So hope everyone had a good holiday. You know, it's the Thanksgiving holiday. Whether you do Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving or whatever, um, you know, hopefully you get to spend it with some loved ones and all that. And that's always nice and great. Um, and hey, you know, if doesn't mean you had to be with your family if you and your family don't get along. But, you know, again, hopefully you had an enjoyable time Maybe you got some time off work. That would have been nice. Um, So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go into some of the movies I watched during the month. Um, So let's get started. So on the first, um, I watched a little film uh, from 2002 called The Hot Chick. Uh, So this is because of uh, podcast purposes. (laughs) I will be covering this soon. Um, So be on the lookout for it. But, uh, you know, uh, I said in my review, I gave it a three and a little heart. I said I'm not really much of an Adam Sandler fan, but I think this movie and The House Bunny are exceptions to the... um, are the exceptions to the shit that this man produces. Um, A good amount of gay panic, but as an early 2000s movie, that's to be expected. Um, Anna Faris and Rachel McAdams are just pure goddesses, in my opinion. And it's not my favorite body slot movie by any chance. Um, And it's absolutely 2000s problematic, though, in a way. But it's, it's a fun watch, though. If you've never heard of The Hot Chick, it's a Rob Schneider movie that was produced by Adam Sandler. Um, and so this is about uh, Jessica Spencer, played by Rachel McAdams. Uh, she pretty much swaps bodies with this guy... Um, Clive, played by Rob Schneider, and then the movie is them just trying to figure out how to get back into their respective bodies, and it's, you know, a hoot and holler. Uh, It has Anna Faris in it in an early role, Alexander Holden, like I said, Rachel McAdams, um, Adam Sandler's an uncredited cameo, things like that. Um, Yeah, I mean, those are are my thoughts about the hot chick, Um, and so I will be talking more about that movie in, in, you know, uh, next month, actually, this upcoming month. Um, But yeah, it's going to be good. You're going to hear about it this month, so that'll be fun. Um, My next movie is... uh, I decided to watch uh, because... We're in the middle, or I have something cooking, where I want to do something um, that is focused on sororities. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Um, so I'm going to do like a uh, kind of a compilation episode uh, where you know I may be talking about some sorority horror. So you'll notice um, with some of the things I'm going to be watching probably this month and then into next month, um, it'll be you know there'll be some horror. Uh, sorority horror movies in there just a little bit this is one of them so uh this is called the initiation of sarah i watched it the next day um it's from 1978 so this is about uh sarah goodwin um she's going to college and her and her sister go to college together at the same place um and so her sister gets into the like popular sorority and she gets into like the ugly quote unquote sorority or whatever anyway she finds out that um like spoilers i guess in case you guys care but um (laughs) she finds out that she has these telekinetic powers and pretty much the house mother of the uh sorority she joins decides to use them for nefarious purposes that's pretty much all you need to know um for me, at least, I this is Carrie Goes to College, pretty much. Uh, but God, was it boring. I gave it a two and a half. I didn't really care that much about it. Um, I watched it on Tubi, so, you know, easy watch. But, yeah, it was very boring. Um, so you'll hear more about that when I, I do the episode that I'm going to be doing about sorority horror um, in the coming months. But, uh, yeah, I just didn't really care much for it. Um Maybe it's a one-time watch if you really want to watch it, but ugh, God, I, I, yeah, that's just me. But uh, then the next day after this, um, I watched. Uh, I covered it already, so you can go and listen to it if you want. But I did the Rugrats movie from 1998. Um, I watched it for podcast purposes. I pretty much said in my review, I gave it a three, and uh, I said, okay, this so this is a musical, um, and I definitely remember watching this in the theaters, and I would. Uh, generally say I enjoyed my watch of it. If you don't know what the Rugrats movie is, it's about the Rugrats. Um, so Phil, Lil, Tommy, Chucky, um, and the new edition, Baby Dale. They, uh, yeah, it's just about the Rugrats and going on adventures. 
pretty much and they inadvertently get lost in the woods and then they have to f- try to find their way back home and it's a whole hot thing you know whatever so this is the first nicktoon movie that ever happened um and then also it's the first non-disney movie to ever uh gross 100 million dollars at the box office um so that's kind of cool uh because of course the rugrats were like a juggernaut um at that time um but yeah i i thought this was like a fun little watch you know, it was on paramount plus or something so i, I watched it there. It's easy enough um but yeah uh, the next day after that, I decided to pull up on uh, a part of a franchise that just came out on Shudder, um, and I watched Hell House LLC Origins: The Carmichael Manor. That's a whole lot of uh, <laughs> a whole lot of words. Um, in my review, I, I said I'm a completionist. What can I say? So I've watched all the other Hell House LLC movies. Um, I gave this a three and a half personally. So this is about uh, a group of cold case investigators. Um, who stay at the Carmichael Manor. This is the site of uh, grisly and unsolved murders of the Carmichael family back in the 80s. Um, after four nights, the group uh, was never heard from again, and what is discovered on their footage is even more disturbing than anything that was found on the Hell House tapes. So definitely you have to have watched the other Hell House movies in a way to get some context for this. But overall, I mean, I enjoyed myself fine enough. You know, it's like I said, it's a solid three and a half movie. Um, the paranormal investigators, in particular, uh, they're actually a lesbian couple, and then one of the uh, the main chick, her brother, comes in as well. Um, and so, yeah, I I watched this on my phone, funny enough, because I wanted to listen to it on my AirPods, and so. Um, and I also, I thought that uh, the sound was really good. I really, I really liked that. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it personally. That's, you know, me. But uh, yeah, I, if you have Shudder and if you're a fan at all of Hell House LLC, um, I would definitely give it a watch at least. Um, or like like I said, I'm a completionist. So if you've watched all the other ones and you haven't already watched it yet, go ahead and watch it. But then the next day after that, I decided to watch a little movie from 1993. Um, I might have mentioned this before, um, because this was a rewatch for me. So I have uh, had a couple rewatches as well. But I watched Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Um, My uh, reasons for this is because uh, I will be covering this at some point. So (laughs) I'm not going to give too much away about that. But you can expect to hear about it. Um, Yeah, so that'll be fun. Uh, Yeah, if you don't already know i talked about it on a previous episode obviously but this is about bruce wayne um he comes across andrea beaumont who is like his old flame pretty much um and then also in the middle of the all this um there's this thing called the phantasm it's like a vigilante assassin and bruce wayne is trying to pretty much figure out what's going on with that and trying to you know um get to the bottom of it and, uh, and yeah, I, I gave this a four and I gave it a little heart. Um, I really do like this movie. It's on HBO Max, uh, which is cool. And I, I do really, I do think it's a decent, a decent movie. Um, so, you know, what, what can I say? I, I wanted to rewatch it real quick, you know, just to get that. So yeah, the next movie I watched because the horror queers had, uh, done an episode on it and I wanted to be prepared for it. Um, so I watched uh, 1997's Funny Games by um, Michael Haneke. And uh, I just said, well, this is appropriately depressing. Um, so this movie, if you don't know, it's about these two boys um, who take a mother, a father, and a son hostage in their vacation cabin. And they force them to play sadistic games uh, with one another for their own amusement. This is a German film, and there is a remake, an American remake, by the same dude, um, with Naomi Watts in it. Um, so, yeah, this movie is appropriately just just, just depressing. But uh, I did like it. I, I'm a fan of, you know, uh, I've watched some German cinema here and there. Uh, I like Germany in general. I, I went there before, you know, it was all cool. So, you know, I... Um, I, this movie was a really good it was a good watch regardless of course but it was just something where i'm like yeah i don't need to watch that like immediately again or anything personally um i would be interested in seeing the remake just to kind of see it um because it literally i think it's just like shot for shot kind of a thing so but that's that's what i have for that 
Um, then a couple days went by and I just didn't feel like watching any movies. Um, but then I caught up a little bit. So I watched a little movie from 1981 called Hell Night again, uh, more into, uh, sorority horror. Um, so I said in my review, this could have cut about 10 minutes in the movie. It'd be a little bit better. Um, cause it's a little long. It's about 102 minutes. So I was just like, could cut down a little bit. Um, uh, but this is about four college pledges. One of whom is, a uh, 20 somethings Linda Blair um they're forced to spend the night in a deserted old mansion where they are killed off one by one um, by the monstrous surviving members of a family massacre years earlier for trespassing on their um living grounds uh yeah I mean I gave this a two and a half personally I I didn't love it necessarily um it's a fine watch like it's not like the worst thing in the world um however I didn't really it's not like I was like oh blown away by it or anything, but you know overall I think um, if you're at all interested in college horror or like uh, like sator- sorority uh, sorority or fraternity horror or anything like that, I would definitely recommend it um, in that way just to kind of get it you know get it in your uh, in your watch I guess. But uh, and it is on Shutter, so you can watch it pretty easily if you have that. Um, then the same day, um, I watched a little movie because it was on Netflix. I watched The Sweetest Thing from 2002. Um, I just said in my review, I gave this a three and a half and a star and a little heart. Um, I said Christina Applegate warrants us to get at least three stars. Um, and I do agree with that. I believe that. So Christina, who's played by Cameron Diaz, actually, uh, her life life is stuck in neutral after years of avoiding the hazards of a meaningful relationship. One night while club hopping with her girlfriend, she meets Peter, played by Thomas Jane, and her perfect match. And so fed up with playing games, she just finally gets the courage to let her guard down and follow her heart um, only to discover that Peter has suddenly left town for his brother's um, wedding. Um, and then accompanied by Courtney played by Christina Applegate, uh, she sets out to capture the one that got away. So uh, yeah, this movie, it's very thin on plot or story. Really? You do get a surprise Parker Posey little thing going on. Um, and you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, secret Jonathan Sheck, uh, cameo too because him and christina applegate were married uh but yeah this is just like a uh it's a fun silly little movie you know it has Selma blair in it as well as one of the other friends um i personally really i liked it a lot um i watched the obviously i I, because it's on netflix i did not watch the unrated version um but you know for me i enjoyed this personally And I definitely think if you're interested in early 2000s movies that, you know, might be for the girls, quote unquote, if you will, I I would maybe give it a watch for sure. Because like I said, Christine Applegate is at least worth a good three stars. I watched View from the Top, goddammit. And I just, (laughs) at that time, I can't necessarily get back. But she's there, okay? And it made it, it didn't make it that worth it, but whatever, you know. (laughs) Continuing with my sorority horror stuff, I then watched Sorority House Massacre from 1986. Uh, so I gave this a three stars. This, I said this was kind of boring, but it was written and directed by a woman, which is super cool. Um, and some of the outfits are popping, so I appreciate that. But yeah, I mean, overall, like it's not like the best. This is also kind of in the universe of Slumber Party Massacre a little bit. And I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, when I talk about sorority horror, we're going to probably, I'm going to talk about that probably. Um, but yeah, this is about Beth, who's a college student, and her sorority sisters are stalked by an escaped uh, psychopathic killer who, stra- who shares a strange telepathic link to Beth. So... Like I said, it's kind of boring, honestly, but overall, I, I think it's like, it's a fun little movie to watch. You know, it's not like, again, it's not the worst movie in the world. It really isn't. But like, I am just, I will, we'll talk about some movies I didn't like that much, but, uh, but yeah, so there was that with Sorority House Massacre. Then, uh, I decided to watch cause I was, I was looking around and I, I found on, uh, on my Roku TV, um, I, came across like you know 
I don't know why I decided, but I was like, oh, I wonder what the, um, I wonder about the Outwaters, right? I was like, oh, I kind of want to watch that, or like I, I've been meaning to watch it. So I ended up finding out that it was on Tubi, and so I was like, is this the same Outwaters? Like, what the fuck? And come to find out, it was. So the Outwaters from 2022 last year. Um, so I gave this. I feel like I gave it like a three at first, and as time has gone on. Or maybe I gave it a two and a half. I don't remember exactly. But regardless, I I uh, I gave this a two, I think, you know, finally. Um, so in my review, I say, some tips for life made this. So that's cool, I guess. Um, also, queer director is appreciated. So for those who are not in the know, um, which why would you be? But okay. Um, <laughs> some tips for life is actually the handle, the YouTube handle for Robbie Banfitch, who directed this movie. He also wrote it. Um, I'm pretty sure fucking shot it. He stars in it. He does everything with it. So, you know, um, <laughs> And uh, Some Tips for Life was his YouTube handle back in the day. So if you go look up Some Tips for Life, you will find videos of him on YouTube where he's, like, not wearing a shirt. And, like, um, it's just, like, his own brand of, like, kind of, like, weird kind of comedy, if you will. I don't think anything's... I don't know if it's too problematic or anything. I don't think it is. But uh, they were also in the... Uh, if you ever look up JP Metz and also soundly awake and stuff, uh, all of those people, uh, Maddie, the rock star, uh, those are people I was watching back in the day. Okay. Uh, cause they were all living in New Jersey at one time. <laughs> so like literally like he was also living there too. Cause they all like kind of knew each other tangentially. And so of course, obviously he's moved all around. He's moved to like LA Robbie did. And I think soundly awake did. And like JP Metz is still in New Jersey and all like whatever, but like, uh, getting off topic, but like, uh, but he made a splash with the outwaters last year because there are some people who really go up for this movie. I don't think I'm one of them, but, uh, this is about four travelers who encounter menacing phenomena while camping in a remote stretch of the Mojave desert. Uh, this movie is just way too long. Really? I mean, it's 110 minutes. So we're looking at hour 50 and it gets kind of put into a similar with like skin and Marink because it came out the same around the same time. Um, I have not seen skin and Marink, nor do I really want to watch it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I think I gave it a two and a half at first. And then I gave it a, I settled on two because I don't care to watch this again, personally. I, I like that it's a queer guy um, who's directed it, and, you know, uh, it's found footage, but I just was not the hugest fan of it. Um, so I will probably not be owning this, personally. I don't think you really need... I don't think... You, if you could find it for free, that's how I would watch it, personally. Um, anyway... So then the next day after that, though, um, I watched a little movie that was on Stars or Prime. I think it was on Prime. Um, and I watched Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret from uh, this earlier this year. Uh, and this is about uh, when Margaret uh, moves with her family from the suburbs. She, she moves from New York City to New Jersey, the New York Jersey suburbs. 11-year-old Margaret, who is played by um, Abby Ryder Fortston, um, she navigates new friends, feelings at the beginning of adolescence. Um, I didn't put anything in my review. I just gave this a four and a little heart. I really liked this movie. I thought Rachel McAdams did such a good job as the mom in this movie. And Benny Safdie was a great dad in the film as well. Um, I thought, uh, God, the girl playing Margaret was such a good role. I think everyone was really well cast. Like, this is a really decent movie. And also... Um, the Sons of Prom did an episode on it I wanted to listen to. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can actually watch this. I watched this and now I can listen to that, uh, which I did. It was, it was wonderful. But yeah, so for me at least, um, yeah, I, I loved it. So if you have Prime, I think it might still be on there. Um, I would highly recommend it. Um, obviously, if you're one of the girls, you know, you might get something out of it. But I also loved it just as like a cis man too. I just really liked it and I thought it was... Yeah, it just, it really 
just shows like what it's like to be an adolescent in a way. Uh, and then also just like uh, I've said before, probably, but Judy Bloom is a bad bitch. And uh, this is why she's a bad bitch. She just tells it like it is. And, you know, is just is putting stuff out there. And I, I fucking loved it. So there you go. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the day after that, though, I uh, watched a little film because I was meaning to. My dog is here, so, you know, I'm going to have to push her away. But uh, I watched a little film from 1998 uh, called Ever After, which is on um, Disney Plus right now. So uh, this is by Andy Tennant, um, and he is the guy who also directed... um, like Sweet Home Alabama, Hitch, It Takes Two, stuff like that. Uh, This is Drew Barrymore movie. Uh, It's about Danielle, who is Cinderella. It's a Cinderella story. Um, So she uh, has a love for books. She could easily quote from Utopia and an intriguing mix of tomboyish athleticism and physical beauty. She uh, has more than enough charm to capture the heart of a prince after beating him with an apple. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it like has Angelica Houston as her stepmom. You have Melanie Linsky as one of the, like the stepsisters who actually ends up being the good stepsister, quote unquote. Um, yeah, I give this a three and a half personally. Um, I liked it. Um, it was on Disney Plus, and it's in. Um, I think it's on uh, 4K as well on there, so you can watch it that way. Um, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was good. Um, I'm not much of like a Cinderella person necessarily. It's not like it's my favorite story or anything, but I thought this was done pretty well. I'm also a sucker for Drew Barrymore a fair amount of the time. Um, So I, I liked it and I I really enjoyed it. And I think like, you know, this is definitely a, an important uh, movie for some people who, who like her oeuvre, if you will. But also I think just like, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. And also, like, the movies made us gay did an episode on this, and The Sons of Prom did as well. So I got to listen to both of those episodes, which was nice too. So, but yeah. And then uh, after that, I watched a movie that's on Max right now. Uh, it's on HBO Max. It's called You Were My First Boyfriend. Um, this is by Cecilia Alderondo. Um, and they're also on The Sons at Prom, um, talking about this movie, uh, her and the co-creator of this. Uh, so this is about a... Uh, so it's a documentary, pretty much. And um, in this high school reunion movie, Turned Inside Out, uh, this filmmaker relives her tortured adolescence, uh, re- wondering if she remembered it all wrong. Um, so yeah, I mean, I gave this a three personally. I think that... You know, there are going to be some people who do like the movie and who who connect with it. Um, There's also going to be people who don't like it or who think that Cecilia is, like, pretentious or something. I don't know. Um, I I, I don't know if she's that pretentious. I think she's putting her shit where she wants it to be. (laughs) You know, she's making a movie about her experience, and I don't think that's too pretentious or anything. Um, I can get how some people may be robbed the wrong way with this kind of a thing, but... I don't know. It's her own experience, whatever. Um, and really more so when you watch this and I won't give anything away, I guess, but like you find out about her life and you find out about a friend of hers, let's just say. And I think this is also like a sort of love letter slash, um, I don't, I don't want to say it's just something that is uh, very much for that friend. Is that all, all I'll say? Um, Cause it gives away, um, it gives away what's gone on in their life and all this stuff. So anyway, that might even give some away. I don't fucking know, but uh, yeah, I would at least give it a watch. Maybe um, I don't think it was bad by any means, like really, but I, I, um, it's not like I was blown away by it, but I did enjoy it for the most part. Um, like she has a thing where she like recreates the Tori Amos video because Tori Amos was super important to her growing up. And like, you know, especially for her as like a, a person of Latinx, um, you know, heritage and all that, uh, growing up in like, uh, Florida and stuff, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, then, uh, I think the next day, I guess I watched a little movie, uh, from last year. It's on Netflix currently. It's called soft and quiet. Um, I had heard about this movie from actually the horror queers, um, cause they talked about it and, um, they had talked about it on their YouTube channel as well when they were doing, um, 
best horror movies of 2022 with a couple of people from, you know, the guests on their podcast and stuff like that. So that's how I first became aware of it. But I was like, well, what the hell is this? Now, um, for me, I think I gave this a, f- a one star at one point, but I, I have given it a two and I'll, I'll stick with there. But this is pretty much uh, Racist Karen's The Movie. For me, it's a no. I didn't really... I didn't love it or anything. Honestly, the acting is decent, I guess, for the most part. If you don't know what Soft and Quiet's about, so taking place in real time, it's a one-shot movie. Elementary school teacher Emily uh, organizes a mixer of like-minded women, um, but an altercation between a woman from Emily's past and the group lead to a volatile chain of events. That's saying something, um, because guess what? This is about women who are super-duper racist and who are, like, white supremacists. So, there you go. Um... It's just like it's very it's polarizing in a way. Um, it actually has one of the uh, the characters from uh, It Follows is in it. She plays one of the the ladies. And if anything, I can uh, if anything I can say like you know this is this person's this woman who this is through a female directed and it's female. Um, I guess written as well. Um, you know, if anything, like you know like her dad is from brazil her mom is chinese you know so i don't know but like it's just it wasn't for me personally it's a blumhouse movie as well so uh, again this is very polarizing um please just go into it um you know being aware that it's about racism extreme racism hate crime all that kind of shit okay uh, it's bleak it's kind of depressing too so it's it's um it's not the easiest to watch so that's all i have to say about that really um but you know at least i watched it finally because i was curious about it if anything uh then uh i think a couple uh, actually the same day cleansing my palate for this um <laughs> But I loved this movie. It's uh, Body Snatchers from 1993. This is on Criterion Channel because it's part of their 90s horror collection. This is by Abel Ferreira, who did Miss 45, The Driller Killer, um, a couple different horror movies. Um, this is a remake of The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which now I've seen all three of them. I have not seen that invasion movie from 2007 that's pretty much body snatchers but uh this is about steve malone played by terry um kinney um he goes with his family to this remote air force base um or it's a military base sorry um his teenage daughter marty uh befriends uh like christina lease um from chucky child's play 2 uh who's the daughter of like uh the general platt who's played by arlie ermy anyway pretty much like it's invasion of the body snatchers but on a military base and i fucking loved it uh, i gave this a four i put a little heart on it meg tilly's in this movie she plays the stepmom to marty and christina lease like i said is in this movie so sign me up this is great uh our boy arlie ermy's in this he's fucking great loved him it was so crazy to see him i have not seen full metal jacket so but to see him in this and then just to think that he's gonna be um in the texas chainsaw remake and all that like i just was like it's fucking great and forrest whitaker's there too um I liked this quite a bit. I have it on my wish list to, you know, uh, buy physical media of. So that's just me personally. But like, I I'm all about it uh, personally over here. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what that was. So the next movie I decided to watch after Body Snatchers it took like a day or two. Um, I decided to, I don't know why I decided to, but I decided to pull up an oldie but a goodie for me. Um, I decided to watch a stand-up special called Margaret Cho, I'm the one that I want. I think this was like, because I just felt like it was in the mood, you know? Um, but this is uh, Margaret Cho's stand-up special. It's from November 1999 um, in San Francisco. She's from there. Um, and she's just talking about like, you know, it's a stand-up special. I'm not going to go too deep into it. Uh, but for me, this was like, um, particular, I think this is essential viewing for like all gay people, just like how I think every Margaret Cho thing is. Um, 
Margaret Cho has been and always will be like an icon for me. Like I just, she is somebody who I really enjoy as a, a uh, comedian. Maybe she's not for everybody, but she sure is for me. And this is a, this is something that I have watched since I was like a kid and I revisit it every so often. Um, it's not streaming anywhere. Unfortunately, I think you can find it on like daily motion or something. And if you have a, a TV to like, st- uh, you know, screen to or whatever, you can watch it on the TV per I'm sure. Uh, or you can just get the physical BD of it. I'm sure you can find a DVD of it or something. Um, but you know, I, I just, I wanted some laughs. Um, and it's cool though, because she's not like a, she can be a joke teller, but she's also such somebody who this especially is about her own experience, you know, of her having her own TV show, um, how that, you know, happened and how it didn't pan out. Um, but then also like just her being like an Asian American and like, I, I don't know. I just really liked it personally. And so I would definitely recommend it. And you can also find some of her other stuff. Like, um, I don't, again, I don't think any of her stuff really streams like that, but I mean, you can definitely find like, um, some of her stuff on YouTube, not uploaded by her, unfortunately, but you know, I do think it is a, uh, they're, they're fun watches. I always liked her stand up specials and I, I, I think I've seen pretty much all of them. So yeah, that's for me. Uh, then the next day, um, I decided and in participation for a movie I'm going to talk about in a minute, um, I decided to watch Good Burger from 1987. Uh, so I said in my review, ooh, Dan Schneider, um, I'm watching this in preparation for Good Burger 2 because the same day I watched this is the same day Good Burger 2 came out. Um, I said in my review, Laurie Beth Denberg is always wonderful. I will always love her. She plays Connie Muldoon. Um, I love her. Um, and then I also said, yes, 90s drag, because in Good Burger, um, if you don't know, these two hapless youths played by Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell um, lead their burger joint into a, in a fight against the giant fast food chain across the street. Uh but there's this part where they go to Mondo burger and they're in drag. And it's just like, so funny. Like they don't have any makeup on, but like they're just in these like get ups and they are so fierce. Anyway, these outfits are fucking great, but yeah. So this is like an oldie, but a goodie for me. It's a Nickelodeon movie. Of course I watched one earlier with the Rugrats movie, but like, uh, again, created by a monster, unfortunately gross, but I think this movie is like a little three for me. It's like a little heart. I enjoy it for the most part. I didn't mean to rhyme, but there you go. Um, yeah. And, and it's just something where I, I did enjoy myself with it. Um, and I mean, you know, it's just a fun time. Uh, and then, you know, I watched good burger two, uh, which is on Paramount plus right now. Both of these, I think are still on Paramount plus. Um, I pretty much said, this is just as stupid as the first movie. And I can respect that. Um, if you don't already know, so Dexter, who is Keenan Thompson, uh, is down on his luck after one of his inventions fails. Um, and Ed played by, um, Kel Mitchell. Um, he welcomes Dex back to good burger with open arms and gives him his old job back with a cr- new crew working at good burger. Dex devises a plan to get back on his feet, but unfortunately puts the fate of good burger at risk once again. Um, now, I mean, I think Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell, like I loved Keenan and Kel growing up um, and seeing them together is really, really fun, of course. Um, and honestly, like uh, I loved having like Laurie Beth Denberg in this movie again, um, playing Connie Muldoon. Um, loved that. Uh, and also, let me tell you something, because me, uh, you know, I'm not there. I do anything too crazy out, but like um, me and my sister, because my sister watched this before I did. And uh <laughs> we were texting a little bit and I was just like, cause Josh servers in this movie. Cause Josh server is from all that from back in the nineties. And he was also in good burger as well. Um, and, uh, God damn it. Josh server. He is so fucking hot, dude. Oh my God. Anyway. So yeah. Um, and he still looks really good. Um, he's in this little movie for like a minute and Oh God, he's so cute anyway. And I thought it was really nice too, that like, um, at the end this movie was also randomly funny enough it was shot in rhode island i think which is kind of cool but uh anyway uh i sure has a right to work reason for that i'm sure but anyway uh with this though i feel like uh, you know i did like at the end of it where um i like the little credits they had which was really funny and silly but um 
like in the credits of this, it actually had like special thanks for people. And I think they even thanked like Ron Lester, who played Spatch in the original, who unfortunately, if you don't know Ron Lester, he was, uh, he's he was very very overweight um he's the guy from varsity blues um he also played the literal almost same role in not another team movie um he's been in stuff you know um and he lost all this weight and everything which was great and then um unfortunately he passed away but i do like that they gave him a little thanks because i'm sure if he was still alive he absolutely would have been in this um especially if it, it would have been interesting because like he would have lost all that weight so like but anyway so get off that subject but um this is just as yeah uh, there's some people who really don't like this movie i mean they really fucking hated it or whatever uh oh like my buddy nathan gave it two and a half so there you go i love that buddy nathan from my earnest episode uh from i hope you suffer um yeah i i agree with you buddy i really do (laughs) Because, again, it, you know, the first one isn't really much right to... It's not much to write home about. This one, I feel like it just... And you got to remember also, like, this one in particular, it's something where this was brought about because people were like, oh, my God, like, Jimmy Kimmel or whoever. No, Jimmy Fallon. I'm sorry. Uh, he had both of these guys on the uh they're his show they did a little good burger sketch and it kind of renewed interest and guess what happened as a result of this movie so you know but i watched that the day before thanksgiving on a wednesday because it's when it came out uh so then the next day uh was thanksgiving and so of course i ate some food and all that fun stuff but i also also um i watched uh a little movie that i think is very thanksgiving um and that's called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. I don't have to tell you much about it, to be honest. Uh, it's about, um, you know, these youths go on a little road trip and uh, then they get turned into meat sacks. Okay. And that's all you got to know. Um, I just put in my little note, like, why didn't anyone just listen to Pam? Like, really? I, I, th- I'm ter- to th- I talked about this before, obviously, but like, yeah, why didn't anybody listen to Pam? What the fuck? But uh, this movie is a five-star movie for me. I really, really want to get, like, the Ultra 4K of it. Once I get, like, I do not currently have a Blu-ray player like that that would do 4K, like, ultra hd whatever so once i get that um then i would love to get that um as part of my collection because i fucking loved it um and but also what's nice too is that if you go on shutter i think so if you get yourself a shutter subscription y'all um if you're at all interested you have like a 4k tv i'm pretty sure that um because that's from 2014 or something like that uh, i'm pretty sure that that like uh, 4k restoration or whatever is what's on shutter because it looks real good on my my tv so i mean I'll, I'll i'll give it that so then um because i just covered it on the show so i of course had to watch it i watched it on black friday um i watched repo the genetic opera from 2008 because it's celebrating its 15 year anniversary i did an episode on it so of course i had to watch it so uh if you don't know what repo is, it's about, uh, a not so distant future. Um, this company, uh, you know, an epidemic, an epidemic of organ failures has devastated the planet. This company, um, has this whole thing of like, Oh, well we can like give you like, um, these organ transplants and like, you know, we could try to help you finance for them and whatever. And then fucking they'll repossess your fucking organs. And then shit ensues. So, you know, the cinematography in this movie is wild and not in the best way. Um, the aesthetic's really specific. I can, you know, appreciate that. Um, Bill Mosley's in it. Like, the the cast in this is, like, kind of crazy. Um, it's a Daryl and Bowsman movie. Um, and, and, again, I don't think I would watch it. If you go listen to my Re- Rebo episode, personally, I'm just not the hugest fan of this. I gave it a two and a half. Um... I am much more about just like watching Rocky horror, if anything. Um, but I can respect that this has a certain aesthetic to it and it has a, uh, level of a cult following. So there you go. But yeah, I just didn't like love it or anything. Then, um, the next movie I watched was in preparation for horror queers because they were covering it on their show. And it was actually on uh, Zumo play. I believe it was, 
streaming somewhere where I didn't have to pay for it, uh, was the Mothman Prophecies from 2002. This is a Richard Gere movie, and it's uh, with Laura Linney as well. John Klein, who's Richard Gere, uh, is plunged into a world of impossible terror and unthinkable chaos when uh, fate draws him to a sleepy West Virginia town, Point Pleasant, um, whose residents are being visited by a great winged shape that sows hideous nightmares and fevered visions. I didn't have much to say about this movie or anything. I would recommend um, what you know, listening to Horror Queers in their episode with Ari Drew, um, because Ari actually really likes this movie, um, and we've been in talks. Because uh, if you didn't already see, he's going to be on next week uh, for Sister Act Two: Back in the Habit. Uh, we had a wonderful conversation there, so be on the lookout for it. But you know, I did like this movie. Um, I gave it a three, and I. It, it gives me winter vibes, you know, um, and it's a little long for me. I think they could have cut it just a little itty bit, but overall it, it is a little unsettling. It's very atmospheric. Um, and yeah, and Richard Gere gets better because in the first half of the movie, I was like, what is he doing? But overall he ends up getting better. I feel like, uh, but yeah. So, uh, and like I said, um, it might make the rounds on streaming every so often, but, um, I'm always just about not trying to pay for uh, for streaming if I don't have to, or if I don't have to, you know, if I don't already have the subscription, you know, I want to try and find it the easiest, freest way I can, personally. Um, so yeah, give the Mothman prophecies a, a whirl, whirl if you want to. Then uh, I watched a little movie again back on my sorority shit. Um, I watched a movie on Tubi called The Haunting of a uh, Sorority Row. Uh, so this is a lifetime movie. Um, you know, it's pretty much about Samantha Willows played by Leighton Meester before she was on Gossip Girl. Uh, she's a college freshman. She looks to pledge a fraternity unbeknownst to Samantha. It is haunted by a former pledge taking revenge on those who wronged her. So it's currently on Tubi at the moment. Um, you know, listen, it, there's not much to it. It's very Canadian, of course. Um, you know, they shot it up there. This was literally like a Lifetime movie um, that was on their channel. I gave this a one and a half personally. Not like I'm hating on all Lifetime movies or anything, but like I didn't like this that much personally. Um but I did watch it because I am doing something about sorority horror. So, you know, I wanted to kind of get uh, a vast variety of other things that, you know, would fall under that. And this does constitute that. So that was my reason for watching it. Then, because it was leaving, it is leaving Criterion Collection. By the time you're hearing this, it's not going to be on there anymore. Um, but I watched as part of teen horror on there, I watched battle Royale from 2000. Um, this is a movie where, um, in the future, the Japanese government captures a class of ninth grade students and forces them to kill each other. Um, under the revolutionary battle Royale act. Um, yeah, I really like this. I gave it a four and a half personally, a little heart. Um, I am, a sucker for Japanese horror movies and I love me a good Japanese horror film. So, uh, this I do think constitutes that, although it's very much like a action movie or like, a I don't know what the hell you want to call it, but it's a horror to me. It's very bloody. Um, I, I am interested in the fact that the guy who directed this was in like his seventies when he was directing it. You know what I mean? And, and like the guy who plays the big bad on here, um, Takeshi, he plays Takano in it, and he actually had like a a show called Takeshi's Castle, and he uh, that's pretty much like uh, the basis for the show Wipeout and like um, what was it American Ninja Warrior and stuff like that, very similar. But he was doing this back in the late eighties, early nineties. So it's so funny to me that like he would be in that role of the big bad, pretty much. This is also where, like, um, the girl who plays Gogo in Kill Bill, um, the Asian girl who's, like, the killer or whatever, is part of Lucy Liu's, like, whole fucking shit. Um, like, 
she's in this movie and literally this is one of quentin tarantino's favorite movies so like the reason he saw her uh was because of this movie and that's why he cast her in kill bill uh but yeah no it's it's a fucking great movie dude i would owe this in a minute um so that's me personally but i uh yeah i enjoyed myself with it um I would even rent this, if anything. If you've never seen it before, please get, do yourself a favor. It is kind of bloody, and it's like kids killing kids. It's very much, I mean, I would, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's out there necessarily, but I mean, there's no way that Hunger Games was not influenced by this shit. I mean, come on now. But, you know, that's just me. But, uh, yeah. And we're coming up on the last two movies I watched, so I decided to watch a little movie from 2000, because I've been meaning to watch it, Um, and I did watch it, I was able to find it on the YouTubes. Um, It it does come on Max every so often, though, but it was, was, you know, cut up on YouTube. Um, You can find it. It's called Loser from 2000. This is an Amy Heckerling movie. This is right after uh, American Pie, because it has Jason Biggs and Mina Savari in it. Uh, This is also uh, Amy Heckerling's next venture after doing Clueless. And this movie got ripped apart. Um, Pretty much what it is, it's a... Uh, about a kid named Paul who's played by Jason Biggs. He's from the Midwest. He is uh, going to college in New York um, and he gets a crash course in city life while he's dealing with his like three horrible roommates, um, two of whom are played by Zach Orth and also Jimmy Simpson, the former Miss Melanie Linsky. Um, anyway, he then uh, befriends a virtually homeless college student, uh, Dora, who's played by um, Mina Savari. Um, and she's uh dating this horrible professor uh, played by Greg Kinnear. And it's also a remake of the Billy Wilder, I think, film called The Apartment, um, which is also the basis for the musical Promises Promises, if you didn't know that already. But uh, yeah, I personally, for me, I liked this movie. I gave it a four, a little heart. Um, I really liked it. I mean, I maybe would go down to a three and a half, if anything, but I still really enjoyed it. Um, I would love to cover it for the show at some point, but like, I, I liked it. I thought that Jason Biggs was a great character and, um, I liked, you know, Dora's, you know, I liked her character as well. Um, uh, Safari, of course. And, uh, and yeah, I I liked it, and I want it to. Um, I would like to stream it again. I, maybe if I rent it or something, I can do that. But I would love to make for it to make the rounds again, so I could watch it on like HBO or something like that. Because yeah, it was like super fun, and I really enjoyed it. So you know, people don't know what. The- <laughs> what does anybody know really i mean but yeah so that was for me at least like i i really liked loser personally um big fan big fan um and then my last movie of the of the you know month that i watched was uh a little film from 2000 called center stage this was in preparation for the um podcast for the seds at prom with uh bj and harmony colangelo um this is about 12 teenagers who come from all different backgrounds. They enroll at the ABA, which is the American Ballet Academy in New York. Um, and they each deal with the problems and stress of training and getting ahead in the world of dance. Um, so I think what's really interesting, I gave this a four and a little heart. I really liked this. I don't come from a dance background. I come from, I guess, even anything, a theater background or a um, music musical background if you will um you know if anything theater is probably more so but like uh for me at least i really i really liked this movie i thought it was so fascinating um that four of the the people in this movie who are in the main cast uh are just dancers they're not really actors you know first and foremost um but like this is Zoe Saldana's first role she ever had. Um, this is, you know, it's just so good. Like I, I really liked it personally. Again, the acting is, is left to be desired just because the people who are in these roles aren't necessarily known for being like the best actors. Zoe Saldana, in no uncertain terms, it's her and Donna Murphy are like the better actors of this film. Okay. But like even the people who are, you know, the main cast who are also 
dancers. I mean, I'm not watching this movie to like watch something that's compelling of like the acting. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not trying to like see this perfect actor performance, but this movie has motherfucking choreography. Ooh, bitch, it has choreography. So like, it's just. I watched this on, um, I think it was Australian Netflix, I believe. So I was able to finagle my way and kajigger my way to, to watch it. But I personally, I really enjoyed it personally. Um, this is way better than Save the Last Dance or anything like that, personally, for me. Um, I just thought it was it was real fun. And um, yeah, I think it got, it got shit on a little bit when it came out. But like, I honestly think like this is just such a, a it's such an interesting film um i also think that uh susan may uh pratt who if you don't already know she is uh julia styles's friend in 10 things i hate about you but also she is melissa joan hart's best friend in drive me crazy um but she is one of the dancers in this movie and i thought she did a great job um it was so cool because i in those other movies i she's the best friend she's julia styles's friend who falls in love with david you know who gets in love with david crumholtz or whatever and then um in in the drive me crazy movie she's just melissa joan hart's friend uh really i don't even know what the hell she did in that movie so like but in this movie i i think she had a more fleshed out character um and she she actually funny enough she actually had the she did not have any dance training really. Um, but she's actually the character who has the most, like, um, she is like touted as like the best dancer, if you will, which I thought was really interesting, but please give it a watch. If you haven't already, I think uh, center stage is worth it for sure. Um, but yeah. And so there you go. There you have it. That's what I watched in the month of November for, for, uh, 2023. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're going into December. We're going into the holidays. So please, please, if you live somewhere where it's cold, please stay warm. Um, you know, so <laughs> I am staying warm over here in Maryland. Um, but, you know, I, I also think, like, you know, you'll you'll be seeing some, some Christmas stuff from me a little bit. Um, just a tiny bit. You know, nothing too crazy. Uh, of course, we have an episode coming out next week. And... Uh, yeah, have some other stuff coming out as well. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a fun time, I think. And, um, you know, if anything, I hope you all have a, a wonderful end of the month, of course. And, uh, I, you know, now that you're hearing this in the beginning of December, if anything, I, you know, hope that you have a great, um, you know, great holiday season, if anything. Um, you know, however you want to celebrate that, whether you're with family or friends, whatever it is, um, you know, and just remember to be kind to people and be nice and, you know, um, be aware of people around you and, and, you know, all that good stuff, you know, um, the world's in a crazy place right now, but, uh, I think if anything, like, you know, especially during the holidays, it's, it can be really hard for people, of course. And so again, you always want to be nice and be cool and, you know, just, uh, do all that good stuff. Uh, this, this has been your, this has been your, uh, um, this has been your daily, uh, affirmation or whatever, I guess. Uh, but again, thank you all so much for, if you are listening to this, thank you so much for listening. Um, of course I have all of what's on the back catalog, so you can listen to all those episodes. If you wanted to, you can follow me on Instagram at, uh, cult cinema circle letterbox at Jesse J E S S E K R E M P, um, to go listen, to go see what I may be watching and all that. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, pull up on these new episodes that we'll be bringing up. And uh, until ne- until next time, uh, thank you for listening to this episode, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>